Did you guys see the scene in the Icon Vehicle Dynamics video on their 2024 Toyota Tacoma that they broke off road? According to the comments on this channel, on a forum, and in my email inbox, you did. We got lots discussed with this, but I want to make sure you get the story out here from Icon. Icon was driving to Tacoma down the road, and they noticed that the on the passenger side there was a weird issue. Well, the shock had gone through the top of the shock mount, and the piece had broken off the top of this. Now, what's interesting is that the comments from this video were like, oh, my God, Toyota, terrible engineering yet again. They screwed things up yet again. What the heck? And then they showed that the bump stop's a little different. People lost their mind. Why is there not an external bump stop? Why Tacomas don't have bump stops? This is ridiculous. Why is Toyota cutting corners? It's terrible engineering. It's junk. But, you know, let's talk about a couple things. Let's break this down because I have some more details for you. I reached out to Toyota and I reached out to Bill Stein and I have some information for you in this video that we're going to get to that is, uh, well, it's rather interesting. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Let me fast forward this video a little bit. We're going to talk about two pieces of this. Number one, what the shock is trying to do and accomplish, whether that's new engineering or not. And number two, what really happened? What 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 did fail? So I'm going to go back to this video and we're going to go to like the three, what I write down, the three minute 350 mark we have or no excuse me a little bit fast forward three, 317 mark we can see here we have two pieces on top of the shock mount tower and the shock goes into that little hole and then with this pieces on top it's kind of like a, a piece that holds things together that cracked so that one cracked and, and came apart in three in three pieces and so but we look at this and we look a little bit closer to this video as i play it you'll see he pulls the top of these pieces off he'll pull the kind of the shock mount through this this is you know and then we see on the bottom side of this boom there is an external bump stop what's interesting the bump stop is is that bilstein says it's built into our shock what yeah this is this is crazy stuff so let's go back let's take one more time at this let me look at this real right here so as we look at the pieces toyota is not commenting they won't respond back to my emails they're just not going to say anything about this because what typically happens in situations like this is it's a supplier issue so they don't want to step on suppliers toes they don't want to call them out for being the problems but this is a supplier issue that's how toyota is viewing this not as an engineering issue not as oh my god cheap you know toyota junk engineering they're saying hey supplier had a bad casting of this part and the part broke it should not crack like that okay and i thought okay well that, that's probably you know the, the answer i'm going to get i'm filling the blanks here toyota won't answer again the comments because it's a supplier issue which that happens but Bilstein came back with a really interesting answer. And one thing I want to really share with you. So let's talk with what Bilstein has said. This is the shock that we're seeing on camera that the guys at Icon show later on as operating perfectly. They have no problems with shock. Shock's doing his job operating perfectly. But there's more details on this that I thought was fascinating. First of all, this is an end stop control valve shock. It's kind of a new technology. It's only been a marketplace for a couple of years now. And the design of this shock is meant to be a better shock overall and take away the need for external bump stops. Yeah, you actually don't need external bump stops for this, according to Bilstein. So looking at the FAQ, we have the FAQs for the Bronco ESCV. The Bronco. Yeah, the Ford Bronco Sasquatch package has had this shock in it since launch. Have you heard of all the problems of the Ford Bronco shock failing? I'm giving you time to answer and think about that because I sure as hell haven't. So it's an ESCV, end stop control valve, capable of providing up to 500% increase in damping forces for the Ford Bronco. Now, I'd probably let's take the same thing and insert Toyota Tacoma in this statement too. ESCV provides the adaptive damping force at either end of compression and rebound stroke. The ESCV provides much needed control when off-roading for compression. During compression, the cabin moves downwards as the shock is compressed. ESCV significantly increases control during these extreme compression events and can eliminate the uncomfortable feeling of feeling the bottoming out of the suspension, high speed off roading, rock crawling, jumping, etc. The benefit of ESCV and rebound is that when you're doing the jumping and rock crawling, suspension components can drop and suddenly create an unpleasant jolt felt by the passengers. Trust me, I felt that jolt. ESCV valve, techn ESC. ESCV technology helps eliminate this jolt by adding control and stability when the suspension is in rebound. So this is a new technology. It's adding to compression and rebounding. You also comes an external reservoir that has more oil and that is able to dissipate more heat and prevent shock fade, which is really important. 
Now, the last thing was, does the ESC valve, ESCB technology remove the need for an external bump stop? Yes. With 5% greater compression forces in the ESCB zone, this position-sensitive solution provides the same control as an external bump stop. ESCV solution has been strategically designed to conveniently package this alternative inside the main tube body. So they, they basically designed a built-in bump stop in the shock so you don't need it on the Tacoma. You don't need it at all, which makes it really interesting when you go back to the video and you look at it again, you're like, wait a minute, there's a bump stop in that video, right? So as he's pulling this, you can, you can, you'll see it in a minute. He's going to flip it over. And there's that orange bump stop there, orange, yellow, whatever you want to call it. So it's interesting that I've been seeing online and seeing on different forums and things, this conversation about bump stops and how Toyota's being cheap and they're, buying, they're, they're cutting costs. There's no bump stop. And that's ridiculous. And then you see Bilstein saying, hey, wait a minute. This technology we've been had for a while that we used in the Ford Bronco successfully. The only difference is the part that failed, the OEM part that failed, was a little ring on top. So shocks were fine, bump stops, not part of the conversation. Well, really the conversation was the little round disc. And as I've shared with you early in the video, I believe, and knowing my way around Toyota PR for the last decade or so, that it's a supplier issue. That a supplier had a bad batch, something in the casting, something happening with that, it didn't work out well. And so I can replace that part on probably newer vehicles. I, I guarantee you, Toyota's already seen this video. They've already dispatched a bunch of engineers to the plant or the supplier that does this. And Toyota's really good about working with suppliers to make a better part. Now, this shouldn't have happened. This, this, this part should not have broken in the first place. So poo-poo on whoever made this problem happen and whoever created this con controversy. Toyota can be criticized for a lot of things. And I've been critical of them at times. But in this case, I don't think it's an engineering flaw. I don't think it's a cheapening out of Toyota. I don't think the world's going to end. I think the reality is it's a new shock technology that most people haven't heard about before. And it's in the new trucks. And it's like, wow, okay, interesting. So as a journalist, made me really curious to get to the bottom of the story to understand why there's no bump stop with the bump stops here on top of the shock. And where's the external bump stop? External bump stop's gone. They've added, they totally put it on top of shock tower if you need it. But really, it's built into shock anyways. So we're double doing the same job. Interesting stuff. I'm sure you disagree. Just put those comments down below. <laughs> Make sure you check out the videos up over here. Website down below as well. PickupTruckTalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.